invitation to, to speak and uh, yeah and also thank you for the conference it's, it's actually been, been, been a real pleasure to hear all the other talks and to get to hang out with all of you guys um, so so we've, we've, we've heard quite a number of talks that mention Kavana homology and quite a number of talks that mention um, Hagar floor homology but not too many talks that mention them both in the same talk so that's really what this talk is going to be about it's going to be about a particular connection between these two theories um, and I should start off by apologizing to anyone that, is, that has heard me speak in the last year or so because much of it will be reviewed. So the first 20 minutes you can kind of tune out. Um, but I'm going to be talking about some new stuff as well. So you can perk back up at some point if you feel like it. Um, okay, so, uh, so everything I'm going to be talking about today is joint, joint work with Stefan Barely. Um, and some, some of it, at the very end, will also be joint work with Denio Ru. Um, and also, I should say right at the very beginning that, that all of the abstract chain complexes I'm going to be talking about are over Z mod 2. Okay. Um, so, so, so what am I going to talk about? Well, um, uh, the, there's this particular connection that was discovered by Ajwa and Zabo, which I'm going to call the Ajwa Zabo spectral sequence. And sometimes, so I don't have to write spectral sequence, I'll just write SS. Um, and, and this is an explicit algebraic relationship between, so for a link in S3, they show an explicit algebraic relationship between the reduced Kavana homology of, well, the mirror of the link, and the Hagar floor homology of the double branch cover of the link. So this is my notation for double branch cover. And, and, and I want to emphasize here that this is not a connection between the two not invariants, the Kavana not homology and the Hagar floor not homology. It's really a relationship between the not, uh, the, the Kavana not homology and this. Three, um, this is invariant for three manifolds, but you can really think of this as a not invariant because this three manifold is constructed using the data of this link. Um, okay, so there, so there have been, been, been a number of applications of the spectral sequence. Most notably, um, uh, one that we heard about in this conference. Well, well, it's not strictly an application of this spectral sequence, but it's really inspired by this spectral sequence. So, um, so this spectral sequence really inspired Kronheimer and Rufka to construct a spectral sequence from the reduced Kavana homology to this, to this instanton not the homology. Um, and that led to Kronheimer and Rufka's proof that Kavana homology detects the unknown. And this is something that, that is that is very, well, it's, it's eluded proof sort of strictly within the realm of Kavana homology. Um, uh, there, there have also been some nice applications to contact geometry. And I won't say explicitly what they are, but I'll just write down some names. Baldwin, Chavanevskaya, um, and I should also really write down Lawrence Roberts here. So, I mean, all of these applications are really coming from, from, from the, the sort of general philosophy that, that on the hagar fleur side, you can, you can sort of detect a lot more things about, about topology. Um, but the Kavana side is sort of easier to work with. So somehow the spectral sequence works like a wormhole. You sort of pull some information across. And, and, and that's really kind of the, the, the moral reason why you're able to get some applications from the spectral sequence. Um, okay, so, so, so my goal today goals are really first to talk a little bit about the algebraic structure of this, of this connection between the two theories. So, so there, there really are some, some nice things that we know about this spectral sequence. And I'll try to describe some of them quickly. Um, but what I really want to get to 
is to sort of um, talk about a sort of more, more atomic view of this connection between the two theories. And what I mean by that is that, um, well, okay, so, so uh, just as, a, as an analogy, in, in physics you might have some sort of uh, phenomenon, which in this case would be the spectral sequence. And so um, I'd like to sort of start trying to explain this phenomenon, the spectral sequence, using some more finer connections, or some finer connections between the two, two theories. So, so to sort of, sort of explain this large scale behavior, which is the spectral sequence, from some sort of smaller scale behavior. So I'll just sort of say, I want to describe some sort of atomic view on the connection. And I'll say much more about what I mean by that. Okay, so let me, let me just start by actually um, uh, just, just recalling uh, uh, sort of where the spectral sequence comes from. So, so again, this Ajrat Zabo spectral sequence relates the reduced Kavana homology of the mirror of a link in S3. <clears throat> and the Hagar for homology of the double branch cover of the link. And, and again, this algebraic connection between these two homology groups takes the form of a spectral sequence. <clears throat> and, and the idea of of, of how they prove that there's a spectral sequence is that, is, is that they start with, with the Kravana complex. So if you have some sort of link, then, then how do you compute the Kravana homology or the, or the reduced Kravana homology? Um, well, you take some cube of resolutions. So just schematically like this, these vertices represent complete resolutions. And then you've got the, the differentials in the complex coming from from sadical bordisms between these, these complete resolutions. So here's sort of a schematic of the original Kavana cube. And what, and what Peter and Zoltan do is, is to construct a, a, a filtration on this cube um, and also some, some sort of higher order differentials on this cube. And, and, and they're really doing this by um, some Hagar Fleur theoretic construction. So, so these, so these higher-order differentials are, um, so, so this filtration gives rise to a spectral sequence, and that's where this is sort of coming from. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so I was saying that 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 I wanted to get to some more, uh, to some some of the algebraic structure of the spectral sequence, and and. And for that, we need to talk about some, some generalizations of the spectral sequence. So, so actually, the spectral sequence works in, in higher generality. Um, so the idea here is that, is that if you add a little bit of um, Gabay's sutured manifold theory, along with some foundational work of Andras Schuhas, then, then, then you start to see some nice algebraic structure on this spectral sequence. Okay, so, um, so, we, so we heard a little bit about, about sutured manifolds yesterday from, from Yi Ni. I'm not going to say too much about them, but I, but I will sort of describe some of these generalizations. <clears throat> so you have similar spectral sequences to this original Ajrat Zabo spectral sequence, which is defined for tangles in the three ball. Um, but to actually, so, so, so not just links in the three ball, but, but, um, but sort of properly embedded one manifolds in the three ball. Um, but, but to actually describe this, this uh, generalization, you need a little bit more structure. Namely, you need a, a decoration on the boundary of the three ball, which we call a suture, which, which separates the boundary of the three ball into a plus part and a minus part. And we also need that this properly embedded one manifold 
is so-called balanced with respect to this extra marking. Namely, that it has the same number of top endpoints as bottom endpoints. Um, and now in this more general situation, you can define what I'm going to call sutured versions of both of these theories, the, the Cabano theory and the hagar fleur theory. So you can define this sutured Cabano homology. So this S means sutured. The sutured Cabano homology of this balanced tangle. <coughs> And this was defined by Kavana in a sort of different context. And then the sutured floor homology of the double branch cover of the tangle. And this was defined by Juhas. And not unsurprisingly, there's a spectral sequence between these two theories. Okay, so... so once, once you talk about this generalization, then, then you can start to see some, some more nice algebraic structure. Namely, that, that, that there's, there, there's a nice operation on, the, on these objects. Namely, you can take two of these objects and stack them one on top of the other. So, a sort of... example of this algebraic structure is that if you take two of these and you stack them, well, you might hope that there's some nice relationship between these, the, 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 the associated spectral sequence here and the associated spectral sequence here. And, and in fact, there is this spectral sequence is just the tensor product of these spectral sequences. And I, I'm actually being very sloppy here. What I should really say is that the filtered complex giving rise to this spectral sequence is the, is the tensor product of these two filtered complexes. So I'll just kind of make that. Oh, it's still in the same place, isn't it? Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, you don't you don't drill out the tangle and then put in sutures. Um, there's just the single suture, and this is just the object inside that. Uh, is this a suture of homology is it like a module over? No, no, it's not that fancy. It, it's actually very easy. Um, you basically just just take the cuber resolutions here and you throw away a lot of the vertices. That's it. It's it, it's it's. Um, and then the coordinates and maps are a lot like in the reduced theory. I can I, I can explain to you more. It's, um, it's not the uh, um, the, the functor value invariant of tangles. It's not. It is not. <clears throat> okay. Is that, does the tensor product preserve the Z mod two grading, homological grading, on both sides? I mean, you'd expect it to, I mean, in, in a typical type of sense of product formulas, but... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean the, the, the gradings, yeah, 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 at least the, the homological grading is sort of doing what you expect it to do in the tensor product. Um, okay, so there's 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 one nice example of the of the, the sort of nice algebraic structure within this this connection between the two theories. Um, there, there's sort of one more that I want to discuss, and that and that requires me to tell you about one more generalization of this ajvat zabo spectral sequence due to Lawrence Roberts, and this is for links inside solid tori, where again we need to think of the solid torus as being being again a sutured manifold, so we need to actually think of the solid torus as being um, an annulus cross I. And now if you have some link inside here,
then, then again, you can define sutured versions of Kamada homology for these objects. And, and in this case, this is the theory that was defined by Asayeda, Shiditsky, and Shikora. <clears throat> and again, this is, the, this is just the sutured floor homology of Andrashivas. And, and, and the result is that there's a special difference between these two theories. Um, furthermore, there's, there's a relationship between our spectral sequence and Lawrence Roberts' spectral sequence, and it is exactly what you might expect it to be by looking at the geometry of the situation. Namely, you can take one of these links inside the solid torus, and cut it along a radial disk. And what you get is a balanced tangle. Just label we'll this T and then T hat for the closure. just a direct sum and of the spectral sequence. Um, in fact, this, th this whole spectral sequence splits into graded pieces. Um, and this is just one of those graded pieces. Okay, so, 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 so the moral of this whole story here that I've been telling you um, is somehow that, that, that these sutured spectral sequences behave well under these cutting operations. So if you want to know how, how the connection between hagar fleur homology and Kavana homology behaves when you, when you cut in these sort of natural ways, then you should really be, be looking at these sutured versions of these two theories. Um, but, but the natural question that we can ask, and this, and this really gets at what I was talking about, um, wanting a sort of more atomic view on this connection. Um, is how about if we want to do gluing? So how about if we want to go in the other direction? Okay, and and uh, to sort of get us started, let me just make this following table. So if we're sort of interested in cutting operations. So we've, we've sort of decided that, that, that the right thing to do is, is to look at sutured versions of these two theories. And then, and then the connection between them should be a spectral sequence. Whereas if we're, if we're interested in questions like gluing, well, we've, we've, we've already heard from Robert, Peter, and Dylan this week that the right thing to put on the hagar fleur side is this border version. This is the lipschitz ajvac thurston bordered homology. And so the question that I'm going to at least try to start answering, um, I'm not actually going to answer, is, is what should really go on the Kavanaugh side? And what should this connection really be? between these two theories. Okay, so um, this question mark will be addressed in the second part of my talk, and this question mark is the third. Okay, 
So, so what about that first question mark? Um, actually, are, are there any questions so far? Um, well, not really. Um, I, I, can, I, I can tell you in five minutes about them after the talk, um, if you're interested. Um, um, actually, let me, let, me, let me just quickly, quickly tell you what, what this version is, because it's sort of very easy to say. I mean, all, all you do is you, um, is you take your link in the annulus cross sign, you project it to the annulus, and so you get a cube of resolutions there. Um, uh, and, and it's basically exactly the same as the, as the original Kavana homology, um, except you, you get an extra Z grading, which is basically coming from wrapping around the hole in the annulus. So from the first homology of the annulus. Um, so, so circles like this are treated differently from circles like this with respect to that grading. And then you just consider differentials um, so, so the standard Kavanaugh differentials that respect that extra grading. And, 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 and the reason I'm mentioning this, too, is that I, I was going to talk a little bit more about this in a second. To what extent does it, is it, is it fine for arbitrary suture manifolds? Is it, is it, you know it for planar surfaces cross I? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it should work for planar surfaces cross I, but we haven't done it. Um, yeah, I mean, I should say that that, that Asayeda, Shavitsky, and Shakura have have a version of Kavanaugh homology for for, for links and arbitrary um, surfaces cross I, but um, I don't think that, that their version is going to be the right thing to admit a spectral sequence to take our homology. Um, but there are sort of technical issues for for defining it um, once your genus is greater than zero. Um, so what about this first question mark? So, so what's the sort of appropriate version of Kavana homology that allows you to talk about blooming? Um, and actually, what I'm going to do is just restrict, I, I, I mean, I, I could be talking about many, many different things when I say gluing, but, but I'm just going to restrict to a particular situation. Um, and that's sort of the, the inverse of this cutting operation that I discussed here. So what I'd like to be able to do is to start with some balanced object like this in a disk cross I and associate to this some algebraic object. and say what kind of algebraic operation I need to perform in order to get, well, the suture Kavana invariant of the closure of the object. Um, and I'm going to leave some space here because I, because I actually want to restrict even further. Um, because, well, doing, doing gluing is much harder. So, 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 so I'm going to start by, by talking about um, uh, not, not all balanced tangles, but just braids. So sigma here is now just a braid. And this is the braid closure in the annulus cross I. Here I'm just drawing the projection. Um, and in fact, uh, we're not going to be able to do it for, for all of the graded pieces. So, 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 so I was just mentioning that the whole spectral sequence splits um, with respect to the sort of extra Z grading that you get from the, from the first homology of the annulus. And I'm going to be concentrating on just one of these gradings, namely the, the, next, to ex, the next to extremal grading, the extra Z grading. Um, and, and actually, by the way, this is sort of exactly the analog of what uh, Dylan was talking about in, in his talk. It's the sort of first non-trivial case. It's, it's the easiest of the non-trivial cases. Okay, so... So luckily, the 
sort of algebraic machinery was already in place. And we just needed to show that it gave us what we wanted. So, so this algebraic machinery is actually coming from um, a paper of Kavanaugh and Seidel from about 2000. So what do they do? Well, they take exactly this scenario. Um, they take some braid of index m plus 1. sitting inside the disk cross i. And now this, this disk is really a parameterized disk. This is not a sutured manifold anymore. This is really um, and, and let's call this disk at the top d sub m. So d sub m denotes a disk with m mark, um, sorry, m plus 1 marked points on it, labeled from 0 through m. Okay, so to this object, they, they associate an algebra. And this is a quotient of a, of a quiver algebra, which I'll describe, and which they call A sub M. And to this braid, now, as you might expect, they, they associate a, a differential bimodule. Which, which they sort of cons construct explicitly. Sigma over this algebra. <clears throat> and the theorem is that if you take the, 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 the co-invariance or the zeroth Hochschild homology of this differential line module, then you recover exactly what we want. The sutured Kavana homology of the braid closure in this next to top Alexander braiding. Let me just tell you really, really briefly about this construction because it's because it's it's, it's actually very nice, um, and and also it 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 has really nice um, uh, it has a really nice relationship to, to sort of constructions and symplectic geometry as well. So um, okay, so 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 what's this ring that you associate to a disk with m plus one marked points? So, 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 so what you do is you is you consider these m plus one mark points to just be the, the the vertices of a quiver or an oriented graph, where every two adjacent vertices has two edges connecting them, one going to the right and one going to the left. And you can you construct this this algebra as the quotient of the associated path algebra. So this let's call this graph gamma m, this oriented graph gamma m. And then you, you look at the path algebra of gamma m. So, so this is just the, the freely generated, the, this is just the algebra which is freely generated by paths um, in this oriented graph uh, where multiplication is just concatenation. And you, and you mod out by, by relations. So, so to describe the relations, um, let me just say that, that to describe any path, you just need to to, to write down the collection of vertices that that path goes through along the way. So, for example, the path that I'm going to write 0, 1 corresponds to this path which just starts at 0 and goes to 1 along this edge. And the constant path 2, well, which, which just stays at the vertex 2, you can write just as 2. Um, and so A sub n is just defined to be the, the, the quotient of this path algebra by the relations. Well, I'll just say them in words first. Um, that if you go any any two, if you go more than one step in, in a single direction, then that's zero. Um, so that's written. And then 
also, if you start at any vertex and go around in a loop one way, it's the same as going around in a loop the other way. Um, and, and then there's one more relation, which is that this loop at the, at, at the, left, at the leftmost spot is set to zero as well. So, so, so you've got this algebra, which is this quotient of a path algebra. Why, why, is, it, um, why is it necessary to have both? Uh, I mean, you allow for both directions to travel because it's, you have all uh, edges connecting to adjacent vertices with both, or, both orientations. So is it necessary to have all these uh, edges? Or can we just take the unoriented uh, Sort of linear graph on all these vertices. I'm just wondering. If um, no, no, no. I, I mean, I, I mean, the 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 generators of the algebra are always paths that are following the orientation of the of the associated graph. Um, but they're just determined by the vertices. In the end. Yeah, I, I think in this, in this, in, in this, for this particular graph, they're determined by the oh, by okay. the vertices because there's only a single path going between. Um, oh, okay, sorry, I thought this was the general case. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 sorry, I should have said that. But for this particular graph, you can, you can write elements this way. <clears throat> okay, so that's, that's the algebra. And the, the module um, that you associate to a braid, um, so as you might expect, what you do is you take the braid and you write it as, as a product of elementary braid words. And then you just construct this module by taking the tensor product of modules that you associate to these elementary braid, braid words. So if you have um, a, a, a positive braid word, then, um, then that gets a mapping cone of, of, of a particular map between two bimodules, namely the, the sort of identity bimodule, and then a particular projective module um, associated to this I, and which is really associated to this picture as well. So this is just the tensor product over your ground field of all paths ending at I with all paths beginning at I. So there's some, some map, some very natural map here. And, and for the other, uh, for the negative braid word, you just also have a mapping cone, but it's for a map going in the other direction. Okay, so when you take the tensor product of, of, um, of, of these mapping cones, Well, it just looks exactly like a cube of resolutions. Um, yeah. And so all you have to check, um, and, and all we checked, was that, that when you take the associated co-invariant complex, then, then all the vertices and edges actually match up with, with our sutured Kavanaugh complex. So, check. Co-invariant complex. Not just the suture Kavana complex. In that particular grading. one backtracking um, resolution. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> so this, this, this grading actually has a natural interpretation in terms of, um, of weight spaces, a, 
of the white slate's decomposition for the associated brush teak and tribe and variant for the, for the cut open tangle. And so this is sort of the next to top white space. <clears throat> okay, so, so um, this, this result, uh, um, so I, I mean, because you're sort of getting a keeper resolutions here, this, this, this might not be all that surprising, um, although it was quite surprising to us because the, the sort of construction is completely different. Um, I mean, maybe, uh, uh, maybe Michael had in the back of his mind that, that this is what was supposed to happen, but um, I didn't see it from the paper. Can you say a little bit more about what the, what's the bimodule there? What, I, I missed what those eyes are. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is, um, so this is the bimodule where you, where you take the tensor product of, of the piece of AM, which is consisting of all paths that end at a particular vertex I. And this I is specified by where this, um, where the crossing took place. Um, and this is all paths beginning at I. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not giving you too many details here, but, but I can give you more if you want. Okay, so... <clears throat> so, right, so, so this, this, this sort of alternate way of, of of obtaining this, this suture quantum complex um, might not be all that surprising. Um, uh, in particular, when, when, when we told Katarina Stroppel um, about this, she was not surprised. Um, but <laughs> um, but uh, so so I mean she um, she actually has a whole collection of, of of rings which are all sort of quotients of quiver algebras, of which this is just one. So and these are corresponding to all the other gradings. Unfortunately, they're, they're a lot bigger and harder to work with. This, this, this was sort of very easy to work with. Um, so, yeah, one, one should expect that this kind of thing is probably true for all of those other rings, rings and biomodules as well. Um, okay, but, um, but, but, but what I really wanted to get to, actually, is, um, is, is something which, which may be more surprising, which is sort of interesting relationship between <clears throat> between this Kavanaugh saddle construction and the Lipschitz Ajvat Thurston border floor construction. And I'm not going to say everything, I'm just going to concentrate on, on one thing. Which is, a, which is a connection between um, algebras on this side and on this side. Okay, so, so on, the, on the border of Hagar floor side, um, they associate algebras to surfaces, or rather to pointed match circles, which represent surfaces. Right, so, so on the Hagar floor side, you have these strands algebras. on the Kavanaugh Seidel side, you have a whole collection of algebras which, um, which, of which AN is just one. So I'm going to call these Hom algebras, and I'll describe how you get them. And I also want to describe an explicit relationship between these algebras. Okay, so, um, so this, this, this relationship is actually coming from um, the fact that both of these algebras can be defined using just sort of pictures. So, so both algebras defined from what I'm going to call bases of curves in this disk with m plus 1 marked points. So if you have this disk with these m plus 1 marked points in it. Here, here's what I mean by a basis of curves in that disk. I just mark some point on the boundary, and, and, and I take a collection of, so actually I should really say isotopy classes of curves. So I just 
to take some collection of curves um, from this base point on the boundary to each of my points in the interior. And, and, it, and it can be done any way you like, but let me just use this sort of simple way. And let me just denote this basis with a bracket C sub i. Are they not inter intersecting? Oh, yeah, you don't want them to intersect. Um, not intersecting. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so, so I claim that from such a picture, you naturally recover an algebra on the hagar fleur side and an al algebra on the kavanov seidel side. So there's, there's, there's a very explicit construction which takes this picture and gives you an algebra here and takes this picture and gives you an algebra here. So on the, on the hagar fleur side, this is very easy to see just by taking the double branch cover. So if you take, so let me, let me just look at the, the case m equals 2 here with this sort of um, basis of curves. So if you, if you take the double branch cover of this picture, you get a picture that looks somewhat like this. So here's the pre-image of these three interior points and the pre-image of this boundary point. There are the lifts of the curves. But, but, but this is nothing but if you sort of um, shrink in the boundary here, if you cut off this, if you lop off this boundary piece, um, what do you have but a pointed mesh circle? Actually, it's something slightly more general than this. Um, it's really an arc diagram. So it's, it's something slightly more general than a pointed match circle, but for which algebras are still defined. And, and this is something that was defined by Rim and Zara. But it's really the same idea. Um, you put, you put Hagar blur base points here and here. And you get this, um, this object like what was being drawn on the board by uh, Peter yesterday. With matching, that look like this. So, so each of the pairs of um, of points of the same, which are labeled the same way, are matched. Okay. So, so associated to this to this basis of curves is this arc diagram or pointed match circle Z, and the Lipschitz Ajvat Thurston technology tell you how to associate an algebra to this, um, and it's really going to be not the whole algebra, but the one moving strand algebra. <clears throat> okay, so let me let me call this the algebra that Hagar Fleur homology associates to this basis of curves. So on the on the Kavanov Seidel side, we also get a nice algebra from this basis of curves. <clears throat> but 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 I have to tell you just a little bit more. So if you if you start now not with a basis of curves, but just a single curve. in their paper is, is, to, um, is to associate in a very explicit way um, to this curve a differential left AM module, which I'm also just going to call C. So now if you want to get an algebra out of a basis of curves, For example, this basis of curves. Then there's something very natural.
natural to do, which is to just take the, the HOM complex associated to this, um, this collection of differential left AM modules. So this is just the HOM complex um, of these differential left modules. So this is an algebra because morphisms can be composed. And, um, and of course, the, the differential in this module, so if you have some, some homomorphism, then you just define the differential in this HOM complex to be the sum of the pre- and post-compositions with the, with the differential in these internal modules. So this, this, this is sort of exactly what, um, what Dylan was talking about on Tuesday as well. So what is this? This is just a differential algebra. <clears throat> okay, and so we're going to say that the algebra that Kavanov Seidel associate to this basis of curves is just <clears throat> well, we want an algebra, not a differential algebra, so let's just take the homology. between these algebras. So more precisely, there exists a filtered differential algebra. Graded algebra is this Kavana Seidel algebra. And which converges to the Hagar Fleur algebra. were actually the same, but then we checked it and realized that, 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 that although they have the same rank, um, the multiplication is quite different. And then we went to Denis and, and, and said, what's going on here? And he said, there should be a spectral sequence, um, and, and this is where it should come from. And then we went and we did that, and, and it was true. So, um, so let me sort of, in my remaining few minutes, just, just tell you a little bit about um, about where this spectral sequence comes from. Actually, I should probably pause for questions. Probably should have paused for questions before. So is, the, is this algebra you define the same as the one that Katarina defined uh, before? Or? No. Um, right. So, so the rings of Katarina are sort of, uh, um, they're, they're described in a very different way, and one of them coincides with this with, with, with this Kavana Seidel quiver, quotient of a quiver algebra. Um, and, and then there are a bunch of other ones. This, this algebra um, we constructed. Uh, and it's it's very closely related to this one. I mean it, it's it, it's it, it's it's essentially we constructed it so that it would have this property. And uh, and, and the sort of motivation behind um, how it should be constructed is, is, is coming from the, from the following sort of fact that, that somehow the, 
these algebras on the Kavanov side, their multiplication is in a very loose way modeled on the multiplication in the cohomology of the circle. Whereas the, um, the, the multiplication in this border fleur algebra is modeled on the cohomology of two points. And, and really the motivation behind, well, um, Denis' motivation behind um, realizing that, that, that so, so actually it turns out that there's a spectral sequence between these two algebras. And this is really coming from, um, from a Z2 action on S1, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll describe this in, in a moment. Um, but, 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 but the reason why, why Denis thought that this might be relevant um, is because uh, uh, actually the algebras that, are, that, are, that appear here um, are really closely related to certain convolution algebras. And, and I won't define these, but these are sort of based on um, uh, uh, some multiplication defined on the cohomology of, of, of sort of embedded Lagrangians. Um, and this was actually explained to, to Stefan and me by Tony Licata, um, and, and it appears in a paper of, please correct me if I'm wrong, Tony, um, Licata, Proudfoot, Webster, um, and also in a paper with Strachel and Webster. So there should be a Braden before Lacan. Sorry, say it again? Braden, B-R-A-D-E-N. Braided convolution algebra. <laughs> There's no uh, person named Braden. Oh. <laughs> um, where, where should... Where? Before Lacan. Oh, okay. Braden. Thank you. Strachel and Webster. Is there a symplectic... Uh, geometric interpretation of both algebras and the spectral sequence I mean, in terms of maybe the recent kind of spectral sequence. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, this, 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 this connection here um, is really more nicely described in terms of Denis Roux's reinterpretation of the strands algebra in terms of this twisted Foucault category. Um, I mean, you'll notice. I, I mean. What is this except, I mean, these are, the, in the double branch cover, these are curves inside a surface. So these are Lagrangians. This is, this, this is, the, this is the Lagrangian floor homology of these two curves. Is there a geometric argument about the X and Uh, no, not, I mean, not, not really. Um, I mean, the, 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 the Kavana side is this. Sorry, say it again. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, let, so let me let me just uh, um, let me just sort of quickly. So this 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 spectral sequence between the algebras is is really really coming from. Uh, uh, some, some spectral sequence from the cohomology of a circle to the cohomology of, of two points. And, and let me just sort of quickly quickly describe how that kind of thing comes about from, from having a Z2 action on the circle. It, because it's actually really, really easy and cool. Um, so, I mean, if you, if you start with some co-chain complex for the circle, so let, some Z2 equivariant co-chain complex for the circle. So here... Um, these, these sort of generating co-cycles are really the homs of these of these points. Um, then, then uh, so on this, there's this Z2 action, so this involution, which I'm going to call tau, which basically ju is just a reflection across this center line, and which sends these two to themselves and this to this. <coughs> And so, um, on this complex, you've got these two commuting differentials. Um, 
And this is just the, the, the ordinary Kobani boundary operator. And then another one, which is coming from this involution, and which is just defined as 1 plus tau. Okay, so these, these, these two commuting differentials don't quite give you a bi-complex. You know, from, 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 from a bi-complex, you just naturally get a spectral sequence. Um, they don't naturally give you a bi-complex because the gradings don't really work out. But, um, but, but what they do give you is, is a natural filtration. So you get a filtration on the complex, um, which is just a two-step filtration. Here's the whole complex. Um, and it turns out that if you take the homology, uh, well, so with, with respect to this filtration, it turns out that the associated graded complex is just um, this complex with just the original co-boundary operator. So that the homology is just the cohomology of the circle. Um, and, and if you take the whole, the, the, the homology of the whole complex, you can check that it gives you the cohomology of the fixed point set, which is just these two points. Um, and so that's where the spectral sequence comes from. And, and the spectral sequence between these two algebras is somehow just modeled on this. It's, it's not much more than this. Okay, so let me go ahead and stop there. I don't know. I mean, Denis, Denis didn't know the one. Um, he, he just said that there should be a spectral sequence and it should come from this idea. And then Stefan and I went and wrote down this coaching complex and, and found what algebra should go there. So if you replace the sort of Kovano cycle uh, algebra with uh, Katarina's algebra, similar story uh, for every, you know, every uh... Oh yeah, right. So so there should probably be something like that. Um, I, I, um, I have to admit I'm scared of Katarina's al algebra. <laughs> 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 um, so, so I don't know, but, but, um, but apparently she and Denis were talking quite a bit about those other algebras and um, and Katarina's algebra should be related to the other, um, you know, where, where you put not, not one moving strand, but k moving strands here. Um, in fact, I think that they checked in a few examples that the ranks match up. But I'm assuming that there's going to be a similar problem, that the ranks match, but the multiplications don't. Um, and so there probably should be something like it. I mean, I, I just don't know. But just by analogy, probably. Um, I have to understand all of Katarina's algebras yeah. and, and how they play with each other. Oh, um, so apparently they coincide. Or, or, I, I mean, what's the relationship between Katarina's algebras and the algebras of, of you and Yan Feng? Oh, oh, both are the same. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the highest one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, I, right. So, um, I guess, I guess that these, that these, uh, these algebras and bimodules were sort of constructed independently by, by Strobel and, and. Okay. Well. I don't, I don't know the history, sorry. Do you know if that endomorphism algebra you wrote down is formal? Sorry, say at, it again? At some point you replaced an endomorphism algebra by its homology. Do you know if that's formal, that algebra? Uh, um, that, tell me what you mean. Is the is a, is a map from the homology to the algebra quasi-isomorphism? Is, I mean, is, is there an algebra map from the homology to the algebra? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know.